and welcome. This is Morgan Wright and it's my great pleasure to host Leon Rishnu, Vice President of Engineering at Cloudmark. And today what we're going to talk to you about is something I think is just on topic, it's on point, and it's the things you need to learn about. It's about spear phishing and the survey that Cloudmark recently commissioned and did to really understand so that you could understand what's the threat out there, what's really going on, and what kind of impact does it have? What's spear phishing? And basically, why should these guys, everybody that's listening to this today, care about this? Spear phishing is a socially engineered attack on an individual or an enterprise designed to extract valuable information out of that organization. Uh, it's typically uh, well-researched. It's designed specifically against the mm -hmm. individual that they're targeting, and it builds on a element of trust and establishes right. an element of trust with the target, with the victim in the organization, to gain access to either the organization systems, resources, or to do a quick hit and run. Your goal is to get me to act on act on something that you send me that's a weaponized payload. It's a it it could be a bad link, it could be malware, it could be uh, uh, credentials stealing. Uh, it could be the wire transfer right. fraud. So we're looking at the survey, there were 300 companies overall, 200 in the U.S., and they were company size of 1,000 or more. So, you know, here's what, here's what was interesting. Nearly 80% of the companies that were surveyed ranked spear phishing as a top concern. Almost half the companies said spear phishing was in their top three. What does that tell you? It's still a problem, but have they addressed it's, it effectively yet? If, if it's in their top concerns, it's not being effectively addressed. And the risk is huge. The risk, of, the risk of attack and the risk of vulnerability is, is significant enough that it's hitting the top level. Uh, that, that's what's keeping the CISO awake at night. But it's not just the CISO, right? Because this is one of those things that if it affects them, it affects the CEO, it affects bottom line, right? Stock price, it affects It affects so many parts of an organization. Spear phishing attacks continue to be the most prevalent vector of attack through email today. And so let's, yeah, the, let's dive into that because the survey is interesting too because um, out of these U.S. respondents, obviously, on average, they say spear phishing is the source of 41% of the cyber attacks, you know, they experience. And almost half say it's all the top three. It's clearly obvious that this solution or this problem hasn't been really adequately solved yet, right? It hasn't been solved, um, which is why we see the numbers that we see in the, in the uh, survey. Organizations expect their secure email gateways to, to stop this attack but it is a fundamentally different attack. It's From not a, just spam, right? I mean, it's, it's not just spam. It's not a volume attack. It's not a blasted out phishing attack. It is very surgical. Well, and let's talk about that because there's some common types of attacks that your survey brought out. We talked about malware, which is like 35% of these. Um, authentication credentials discovery, 32%. Wire fraud, 11% of the types of attacks. Wire fraud is just an email, right? I mean, why, yeah, wire fraud isn't trying to exploit any vulnerability on your system. Wire fraud is designed to extract money out of the organization. And in the latest FBI statistics from August of 2015, uh, there was $800 million lost to wire fraud. Well, look, we're talking about a lot of these problems, and it reminds me, you, you remember a few years ago when everybody said, oh, email marketing's dead, you know, email's dead, right? But email is not dead, in fact, Email is 91%. It's the most common platform of attack. It is the most common platform of attack because it is the broadest business used communication mechanism today. Part of this, uh, we looked at some of the top targets for these spear phishing attacks. IT, finance, sales, and CEO. I mean, yeah. a significant number, 48% of the attacks are on IT. Yeah, absolutely, because they hold keys to valuable parts of the organization's information. You go after the finance department because they control the money. They got the money. You go after the <laughs> you go after the IT guys because they they're the ones who control the perimeter and the and the uh, and, and the credentials to get into the into the network. And then you go after the the C level executives. Speaking of CEOs, and some of these two, they actually spoof. Also, it's not the CEO that's actually doing it, but they actually spoof the actual CEO itself. So, right. I'm I'm the hacker. I'm the attacker, and I pretend to be the head of CloudMark, and I send you an email that says, "Hey, Leon, I need this now." You know. Right. Absolutely, and that's where, and that's where you, you leverage the power structure. Let's talk about some of the problems that uh, spear phishing has in terms of the impact. So part of this impact is, in this survey, 40% in the U.S. had financial losses from a spear phishing attack. 
43% said that they were impacted by loss of employee productivity. I mean, so they've lost money, but they've lost productivity. What happens around that? Uh, again, what happens when you are subject to an attack? You get your IT department involved and drop whatever you're doing, go figure out what happened. You've got to dig through your mail archives. You've probably got to bring in a third party to, to help you remediate systems and understand what happened. Uh, you've got to go and, and explain yourself to, to the people you report to, whether it's stockholders, the board members, the, the rest of the company. You've got to now start thinking about education right. and what are you going to do about it because, hey, I've just been compromised. And so you've taken, you've, you've taken the focus of the company in a lot of significant departments away from what their daily job is that's, that's, that drives business and focus them on remediating and respond this to the fire instead. And having to respond to the fire. Oh, I tell you, and look, some of these other things, 35% said they experienced negative impacts to their reputation. They've lost customers, lost intellectual property. Look, let's kind of put this all in perspective, right? The point about it is, is that with numbers this high, what does that tell you about the effectiveness of current solutions? Well, they're just not working. Like I alluded to earlier, the, the problem is different from uh, an email messaging abuse problem or an anti-spam problem. It is fundamentally different because it is very researched and it's very targeted. I mean, significant failure rates uh, with a lot of these efforts. Why is that? Are we still back to the human factor? Human again? behavior. Yep. There's always someone in our organization who you can exploit. And, and the attackers are extraordinarily good at, at, at crafting attacks to exploit individuals. Yeah, I mean, it's a war, and right now they're losing. The, the bad guys are they're winning. So let's talk. Let's, let's bring this all together now, because let's talk a little bit about CloudMark. You told me this earlier, and I, it's like, you've got to be kidding. 12% of the world's email goes through some type of a CloudMark solution. Yeah, so we're deployed in the largest ISPs, telcos of the world, and we've been OEMing through the enterprise uh, through various partners for the last 15 years, um, both as a content filter, as a, as a reputation system, as a, and as a global threat right. network. You're the vice president of engineering. You work yep. with whole team. I mean, I hate to ask, can you, you know, how many billions of emails do, in, over 15 years does 12% represent? Billions and billions, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, several billion a day. <laughs> several billion and a day. That's what yes. they're exploiting. Seems to me the best solution is not to even so, have it get to their desk in the well, first place. Well, and, and that's the goal. Yeah. Right. And, and that's, that, that, that's what we focused on. And the philosophy is that you just want that problem to go away, mm -hmm. just like you don't want to see the spam. You want to keep email as a business critical messaging system that you can continue to use and trust. Look, I mean, there is so much here, and I think the quick takeaways, you know, for the, for the folks that are watching here, uh, I think the quick takeaways are here, right, is that this is a problem that's going to get worse before it gets better. It yep. gets worse if you don't do anything about it. You just can't stick your head in the sand and hope it goes away, right? Hope is not a strategy. That's right. That, that's our business. Our business is to make sure that you don't have to spend your time doing that. <laughs> this is great stuff. And, and look, folks, we're going to wrap up here now, but I'm going to tell you right now, um, this is something that is transformational. This transforms the people in your enterprise. This transforms the productivity. It transforms company. And so, look, kudos to you guys. Great job on doing this. Uh, I'm Morgan Wright. Thank you for sharing this time with us. We hope that you got something out of it. Make sure you stay tuned because I know you're going to hear a lot more from CloudMark about this solution. So great job, Liam. Thank you, Morgan.